Good morning, guys. Morning. Are you ready? Yeah, we are. One of the goals of Cambodia is to try and like have a daily workout. Yeah. I'm here with the strap and Ben Keeley. I'm gonna try and knock this guy into shape. Please do. Even though I'm not really in shape. <laughs> yes, you are. Lead the way, my friend. What are we doing today? Uh, well, obviously we don't have much to work with, so I guess it's just sort of making the most of a pretty bad situation. Pump up the jam, pump it up, while your feet are stumping. And the jam is pumping, look ahead, the crowd is jumping. Final look over Phnom Penh. Yeah, it's a beautiful city. It's a love-hate relationship with the city. It's beautiful in its own way. Yeah. These are the final moments here in Phnom Penh. We're leaving in about 25 minutes. We've set up for a taxi to take us further south. So right now uh, we're paying 50 US dollars to go from Phnom Penh to Kampot. And Kampot is like literally just directly south from here. It's gonna be about a three hour drive. Kampot just looks really pretty, that's the main reason we're going there. But it's a bit of a sleepy town. It's known for salt and pepper exports, and it also has a lot of durian farms. But most of all, it's just like beautiful nature. We're checking out of the Orasi One. We've been here for three nights. I have no complaints. It's a pretty good hotel. Second home. It's our second home, yeah, it feels like it. No frivolous whistles or anything like that, but it's a good place to rest your head. A second home. If you're coming to Phnom Penh, this is a place that I kind of recommend. All right. Hello. Hey, check out those rims. Yeah. <laughs> What's your name? Oh, uh, my name's Suun. Suun. Yeah. My name's Christian. Yeah. You know what they say? If you need to get there soon, you better call Suun. Sorry. We taking over his marketing? Yeah, I think so. So where are we going to next? Uh, kaput? No. <laughs> I don't kaput? know. <laughs> kaput? We're going to Kampot. Pepper and salt. Pepper and salt. Look at the flick of that wrist. I woke up feeling like I was on the moon. I woke up feeling like I was on the moon. Hopefully done nothing. Yeah, that truck went the wrong way. Ronnie. Guard the car. Mission for bananas. Do you want some bananas? Could I get some banana? Um, could I get some of this and uh, some banana? Uh, how much? Three dollars. Three dollars. So we did a quick fruit stop for about three bucks. We got a massive thing of bananas and I think these are called oranges. Lychee. Is it lychee? Is that correct? Lots of fruit. Not much money. The breakfasts we've been having at the hotels feel so empty and I'm left feeling like I need nutrition right now. It's not like Thailand. You go to Thailand, you'll find great food, very inexpensive, and it's everywhere. Here, it's a lot harder to find, so uh, I think we'll be eating a lot of fruit on our trip through Cambodia. All right, we have arrived. What can I say? Soon sure got us here pretty soon. Yeah. Uh, uh. The nice thing of traveling Southeast Asia is that things are pretty inexpensive. So staying here in like their deluxe three bedroom suite is gonna be about 75 US for the night. So divide that by three people and it's really reasonable. How's the crib? It's the editing room right Hey, here. we got our own little editing room. Welcome to my humble abode. This is CTV Cribs. Let's show you the bathroom. Get this tour started. When you're a group of guys, you gotta make sure you're living lavish. So we got this here walk-in shower. Not bad, not bad. You got your pebbles. Toilet, comes with a little bum washer. Two buttons. I love having different flush settings. Over here, we got the maid. This is uh, <laughs> Miss Ronnie. <Hello>. Housekeeping! <laughs> Over here. This here is uh, Ronnie and Ben's bed. So uh, they're bunk mates. Yee. Yeah. Bunk mates, bunk mates, it's all the same. 1970s telephone. Hello, housekeeping. This is uh, the closet that brings you to Narnia. I actually did not expect it to be this nice for what we paid. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what do we know about Kampot? Two things. Two things. In Cambodia. Yeah, yeah. We know it's a bit of a sleepy town. Uh, there's mountains, salt and pepper. And then, I don't know, that's pretty much it. 
We don't even have to go to the rooftop anymore. Yeah, you can fly it up and scout out the roof. A lot quieter than Phnom Penh. Yeah, way more chill than Phnom Penh. This is a real concern. I'm scared! <laughs> <laughs> We're breaking free! Oh, one, two, break free! Uh -oh. oh no! Whoa. <laughs> oh. Right as like the gust of wind comes by. Yeah. But, yeah, I think it's fine. Whoa. We got a week remote right now because we're trying to fly through a concrete building, which isn't really a good move. But the shot looks nice. We are right now in Kampot, but there's something we skimmed over in Phnom Penh that needs to be talked about. It's basically foundational to what Cambodia is today. It's a very, very dark part of their past, their history. It really wasn't that long ago that Cambodia suffered a genocide. It's a very negative thing to focus on and I only wanted to give those of you who wanted to hear more about it the option. So if that's something of interest, I'll link the video down below. You want to hear more about it. Um, I'm going to give you a real quick synopsis on it, but I actually did a full in-depth video on it when I was in Cambodia last time. It's not filmed as well. It was shot on a GoPro. It's like a throwback to Christian's travel vlogs. That's what I used to call myself. Uh, like literally a year ago. If you want to hear more about it, it's down here, but in short um, Cambodia had a guy by the name of Pol Pot and he came in he started a political party by the name of the Khmer Rouge But uh, apparently it's actually pronounced Khmer Rouge, but it's spelled Khmer and most people will say Khmer Rouge What they wanted was to basically de-establish any development in Cambodia. Their ideal Cambodia was one where there was no westernization, there was no modernization. Uh, they basically took anyone that was educated, anyone that wore glasses, that was a sign that you were educated, and they put these people into death camps. One of the very big touristic sites in Phnom Penh that we did not go to is the killing fields. And essentially what these were were concentration camps, uh, but without the work. Basically, people were just brought there. They were beaten with uh, very, very blunt objects or pickaxes, axes, um, and then they were thrown into a hole and buried. During the 80s, roughly two to three million people in Cambodia were killed. The Cambodian population is around 15 million, so literally almost one fifth of the population died due to this dictatorship. So it wasn't just the educated people that suffered from the Khmer regime. If you were a commoner, a peasant, uh, you were put in the farms if you were not already a farmer. Overnight, the production of rice was doubled. Basically, Pol Pot said that, you know, you're producing 100,000 kilograms a year, now I need 200,000. With no technological innovation, these people were expected to just start creating way more uh, agricultural output. And so what that led to was just basically slave labor. People were working 14 to 16 hours a day, seven days a week without rest and without really any nutrition. These people were eating really, really low calorie and low nutrition rice diets and uh, a lot of them started to die off. Today, the Cambodian population, over 50% of them are under 15 years old. So it goes to show that half of the population is extremely young and that is because so many of them in the older category unfortunately died during that period or fled from Cambodia. Cambodia was left in a very fragile state. They're basically still deemed a third world, a developing nation, and uh, there's a lot of progress that's been happening recently now. Uh, you see foreign investment from people like Chinese, Koreans, Japanese, and so these are great things for the Cambodians. I have to say it's a very difficult subject, but I do recommend that if you come to Phnom Penh to go and see the killing fields, for me seeing it once was more than enough. It's a tough subject, but it's definitely something that gives you kind of a bearing and an understanding of the country we're in. So I'll end it there. That's pretty much all I have to say on the subject, but I thought I should definitely talk about it a little bit. It's quite similar, it's like uh, it reminds me of Chiang Mai. Oh, the Lantern Festival. Ronnie, ask him what they're celebrating. 
So Ronnie's currently scaring the locals. Ah. <laughs> well, <laughs> we tried. Yeah. Yep. A lot of lanterns and people praying for a good future. Yes, yeah. Um, They're praying for a good pepper season. Yeah. Lots of salt. A lot of salt. <laughs> Samati. Hello. Samati. Samati. Oh. Very nice. <laughs> We're here to inquire about the land for sale. Mm -hmm. $3,500. $3,500 and you can be an owner of land here in Cambodia. Yes. Land size 10 by 30. We just got to the river and this is where we were told to come by one of the locals. <laughs> Basically one of the few places in the city where you can actually get a tiny bit of nightlife, some restaurants, bars. How much is it for uh, Anchor Beer? Uh, drop 50 cents. 50 cents for a glass. Yeah. Let's oh. go. Let's <laughs> go. So we just had some pizzas here at Happy Special Pizza and they claim to be the best pizza in the entire area and I agree. We actually just had our best meals here in like all of Cambodia. Happy Special Pizza, Kampot. I was like, how much is it to get back? And he's like, one dollar? And like, my internals is like, you need to negotiate. You need to try to get it lower. But I don't think we can go much lower than a dollar. Ronnie, <sighs> what have you been working on for the past three hours? Uh, six hours. Five <laughs> hours. No. What is it? Like very epic. One minute. One minute video of the temple in, in Tap Pro. Yeah. Very epic. It is. But it's one minute. You gotta give them credit though, it looks really sick. Yeah. That's the end of the vlog for the night. Make sure to check out their channels, leave the video a big thumbs up, and let's get lost again tomorrow. Fun of the day.